All right, welcome back. This is Mr. Lister, and we are now in the third section of Chapter 7, so let's go ahead and go over there. We've looked at exponential growth functions and decay functions, and they're pretty easy to graph. Now we get into something called natural base E. Natural base E, okay? So what the heck is that guy right there? That's, a, that's an E, right? Well, E is roughly... I don't know, it's 2.71A2, A1, A2, A4, 6, okay, but what does that mean? Well, uh, the, think, of it, think of this as your, as your compound little kind of formula thing. Remember the uh, A equals to P1 plus, uh, what is that, the rate over the compounding, and you have it like NT thing here, okay. Now, so this, this right here is your, is, is your compound little formula. So in other words, it's going to, it's going to uh, if you put money into a bank, it's going to compound either quarterly or biannually or annually or daily or whatever. Okay, and that's your N. So the compound needs your N. So what I want to do here is this. Uh, we're going we're gonna to take this idea of that compounding and uh, because the, the best compound you're ever going to get is, is continuous compounding. Okay, that would be like your infinite. So this number would be like infinite here. It would be obviously be infinite up here. So I'm going to make a little chart over here, kind of a chart, not really a chart, but let's, let's, let's see what happens. I'm going to see if I can get really close to E. Okay, so I'm going to compound 10 times and then take it to the 10th power. So if we're obviously, if, if this was your rate, you're, you're, you're getting a lot less rate, but you're taking it to the 10th power, right? So let's see what happens there. Let me, let me see. So that's uh, 1.1 and to the 10th power. And so I get 2.5937. So I get 2.5937. Okay. But what if we take this to 100, right? So let's go 1 plus 1 over 100. So it's a really small, small rate there, but you're taking it to the 100th power, right? So let's see what we get here. So we have 1.01, uh, right? That's, a, that's 100th, right? Uh, let me enter that. Then we have 100 and then take it to that power. Ooh, look, 2.7. Okay, so we got 2.7048. Okay, so we're, we're, it's getting better as, even though we're, 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 we have a, a, a much smaller rate here, we're taking it to a much greater power, so it's getting really close. So look at that 2.7 there is right there, 2.7. Okay, let's take it to a million, right? So I'm going to have um, 1 plus 1 over a million. That's six zeros. Right, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then we're gonna take it to the millionth power, right? Four, five, six. Okay, let's let's see what this guy's gonna equal to. So I have one million. Is that a million? Yeah, it's a million. And I'm gonna flip flop that guy and add one to it. I'm gonna take it to the one millionth power. Bingo. Oh look. Two point seven one eight three. If I extend it out, three uh, oh, two point Seven one eight two eight, and so we're only off by like about a millionth of a point there from from this guy here. So two point seven one eight three. So what's what's the whole point here? The point is is that you, the the best um, you're ever going to get as far as compounding is infinite compounding. If I take this to infinity and infinity here, you're gonna this, this is the number you're going to get. Uh, the, the more accurate out here, of course, but um, so if you go to a bank and they give you infinite compounding, that's the best you're ever going to get, okay? So what is that? That's E. So E is uh, what we call continuous compounding. Let me write that here. Continuous, continue, oops, U -us compounding. Okay, so when do we use this stuff? Well, we don't use it at a bank because it'll never happen at a bank, right? But it's going to be 2.718218 and so forth, okay? Now, uh, when do you use this? Well, for... It's for growth and decay, but what kind of growth and decay? For a bank account? Nah. For, uh, for population growth. Oh, there you go. So this is really for population growth. Why? Because, because not everybody like has all their babies at the end of the month, right? So they have babies when? Well, all the time. Babies are being born all the time, right? And so that's, that, that's when you would use E for population growth or like a, like a bacterial growth and decay because it's constantly changing, right? Okay, so uh, we just want to kind of get used to uh, the E uh, just for a moment. Okay, so you look at your calculators um, on your on your CAS, you can find E right here. It says right. Oops, let me get in the picture there. 
uh, e to the x. There it is right there. So how, how do you make it work? Well, let's turn it on. And I think I've got a clear screen there. And so if I punch the e in, and it's going to ask, it's going to show me uh, the e. Let me see if I can make that, let me see if you can see that. There it is right there. Kind of sort of, you can kind of sort of see it, right? E to this something, right? So if I just plug a, a, a 1 in there, then I'm going to hit my blue key enter because I want to approximate. Oh, look at the number you're getting. See that number right there? 2.71828. Okay, that's exactly what it is. Okay, If you're using a um, TI-84 Plus C Silver Edition, oh boy, uh, that's that guy right there. Your E is found, it's a, it's a blue key, so you come down here to that little LN. I'll leave that means natural log. Why is it LN instead of NL? Logarithmique, naturel. It's, it's French. Okay, so you have E to the X, that's your blue key, so I'm going to turn that guy on right there, there he is, there's my screen, and I hit the blue key LN, and then I get my little E to the something there, you can see a little bit better this time. I'll plug a 1 in there and hit enter, and I get my 2.1828.1828, and 4.6 comes after that, okay? Alright, so, but I'm going to use my calculator a little bit faster with this thing here, on my calculator, uh, my E to the X is right there, E, so if I, if I wanted to say E, well, I would, in this calculator, I hit 1 and then E, so I have that right there. And I hit the uh, extension right there. Ooh, look, 2.71828182846. Okay, so that's it. That, that, it just refers to continuous compounding. So let's go ahead and get used to this, this thing, whatever it is. So you're going to have to use a calculator on this, obviously. Um, and so you want to treat this just as a, as a, like, a um, like a variable, but it's a number, but it's like a variable. And so when we have a common base and we're multiplying uh, exponents here, what do we do? We add the exponents, right? So it's going to be e to the 7. Okay. Ooh, what is that? Well, uh, you can say 7e. Okay, there it is right there. So that's 2 point, basically that's 2.718 uh, to the 7th power. And that, that equals to 1,096.6332. Okay, that's how you work that. Um, this is just normal operations here. That over... 12 over 3 is 4, right? So it's 4 times e to the what? e to the 3, isn't it? Because you subtract those guys. Okay, let's just figure it out. So we've got 3e, e, and then 4 times, and I'm getting 80. So that guy is 80.3421, and so forth. Just normal, normal operations, okay? And uh, here we're actually just simplifying the expression. So, I mean, you could leave it like that, but I'm, I'm taking it to a, a, a decimal. I'm doing what it says here, but, you know. You, you could actually just leave it right there if it just says simplify the expression. Here, let's just simplify this guy. Okay, so here I'm squaring the 5. Remember, everything is tagged in here. Right there, everything is tagged. So 25, uh, 5 squared is what? 25, right? And then I have uh, that number squared is going to be what? e to the negative 6x, isn't it? Okay. Well, what does that negative do? That's flip-flop, right? That's going to give us 25. That, that negative doesn't affect that 25. And it's going to be over e to the... 6x, uh, isn't it? Okay, there it is. Okay, so that's that's as far as you can go. I don't know what x is. x is just x, okay? All right, so that's simplified, uh, that's simplified, and that's simplified, and this is, of course, the number that it actually comes out to be. So let's go ahead and just make sure we know how to do this. So we have 4, and I have e. So it's e to the 4th power gives me that number right there. And so we're going to put little squigglies, okay? And that would be uh, 54. 5982, and then here I have e to the, oh good grief, what is that? So it's going to be 0.09, it's a negative, and I'm going to hit e, bingo, so I'm getting about 0.9139, that makes sense because it's negative, so it's actually throwing this guy in, uh, you know, under the, uh, in, into the denominator, so we have, what this really says is this, uh, 1 over e to the 0 0.09, and you get that number right there, okay? Alrighty. Uh, let's just look at a couple more things here. It says natural function, uh, a function in the form of y equals to this. Now, a is like a coefficient. That's your stretch or lazy. E is your uh, is your kind of like your main number here. Then you have rx. X is, you're going to plug in values for x, but that r right there, of course, uh, that will determine if it's a growth function or uh, not a growth function. Okay? So, if... A is larger than, than zero on both of these occasions, but what we have what we have here is that if R is greater than zero, that means it's a positive number, then it's going to be a growth function. Okay, so just watch that. So in other words, this this is this is not a growth function here. This is a, a decay function. This that's a growth function. 
and down here, if it, if R, that guy right there, is less than zero, that means it's a negative number, like this guy right here, that's a negative number, right? Then it's going to be a DK. Okay, here we go. Let's move it. All right, so looks like we're just going to, oh, we have to graph this stuff. Okay, it says graph each function, so state the domain and range. Well, domain and range is going to be much like your exponential functions, because these are exponential functions. We're just using with uh, with. Uh, our base is uh, our base is e, okay, and so what they look like? Well, growth function looks like what, right? In a in a uh, in a dk right here, a dk function would look like what, right there. So it looks like our domain is going to be all real numbers, just like before, all reals, real man. And your range, of course, is going to be it's going to be sitting right on that on that um, x-axis or the y equals zero line. So your range is going to be y is, in this case, uh, greater than 0. But over here, remember that guy? Remember that guy right there? OK, that's your range, isn't it? So your domain is all reals. And this guy here, we're going to graph it in just a second. All reals. Oops, reals. Right. But your range is what? It's going to be y is greater than what? 1. See it right there. Okay. So you know, see see how you have the x minus two. That's that's your right shift by two, and this is your your vertical shift right here. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and graph it. I guess. Uh, let's just throw in some numbers here, and you actually have to calculate this out. You have to, have to use a calculator. It can get kind of ugly, but we'll we'll deal with it. We have x y. Let me plug some numbers in here. I'm going to plug in a. I'm going to plug in a zero, because that'll that'll kill the whole thing, won't it? And I should probably get a negative one, you know, but here we go. So zero, one, two, three, four. Okay, so four is kind of an easy number because four times 0.25 is a one, right? So here we go. If this is, if x is zero, it kills that whole thing, right? So what's your answer? Three times one is just three. So I know it's zero, I'm at three, okay? And uh, at one, that would be 0.25. So I'm gonna, ha I'm gonna have to start plugging stuff in. So I have 0.25. E and then three times. Ooh, look at that ugly number. 3.85. 3.85 roughly. Okay, so you're gonna be 3.85. Right? And you're gonna to have to get used to this and be able to punch it out pretty quick. I can do it really fast with this calculator here. So we have uh, if it's two, that would be 0.5, wouldn't it? Two times 0.25 is 0.5. So I have 0.5 E and then three times. I get 0.494 right? I'm gonna call it uh, 0.495, okay, so it's 4.9, that's what I meant, 4.95, okay, let's keep going, uh, 3 times that, I don't want to do that, I want to do 4, so 4 times that's just 1, so it's going to be E, and then I have 3 times that, and I get 8, so 8.1548, okay, so how do we graph that thing, well, we just, just kind of like figure out where the points are, so 0 is 3, I know I have an asymptote where, right here, okay, I have uh, at one is at three point eight five, so it's a growth function. So one is at eight three point eight five, which is about right there, okay. And uh, at three, I don't know where that is. At four, it's going to be way the heck up here. So four is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and there you kind of have it. So you have this thing that that looks uh, kind of like that. Now I want to actually want to throw a negative number in here just to see what's going on here. I'm going to throw a negative two in here. So I have negative two. So negative two would be two times that's going to be uh, 0.5 is going to be negative 0.5. So so I have 0.5, make that a negative, and I'm going to hit my E button, bingo, and then three times that, three times that's 1.8. So at three is about 1.8, and so I just about was just sketching that, but I but I pretty well got it right there. Okay, so he, he looks like that. And there's your there's your growth function. Okay, so let's uh, take a look at this guy here. A couple ways you can do this. I'll tell you what, the easiest way probably here is to take it to your base function here. So I have y equals e to the negative 0.75x. Okay, now, you know, so where the 2 and the 1 go? Well, I have, that, that's just your, your translation, okay? In other words, translation where you, you move right or left or up or down, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and graph this guy, see what he looks like first, and then we'll go we'll go for it. So we have x and y, uh, how about negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3, and 4 if we need it. I don't think we'll need it. So let's plug it in. So we have, if uh, x is 0, it kills the whole thing, so e to the 0 is just 1, right? So I'm going to plot that, so I have 0, 1, okay? 
and let's go to, let's go to the negative one. Let's see what's happening here because this is a this is a DK function, so he's going to look like this, right? I, I can always already tell what he looks like. So at that negative one, uh, that makes that a positive. So it's going to be positive uh, 0.75. So it's going to be 0.75. I'm going to take it. Uh, that's the power of of e as my base. Okay, so it's going to be 2.1. 1, 7, so 2.117. Okay, so as I'm going backwards, I'm getting larger. 2.117 is about right there. Okay, and then 2, so 2 times that is 150, so it's going to be 1.5, and and then I'll hit the E, so it's going to be 4.48. So way back here, you go, it's going to go 1, 2, 3, 4.48, which is roughly about half. Okay, and you can, you can see what this guy's doing right now. See there? Uh, let me just put try one of these numbers here. So 3, three times 7.5 is what? 3.75, is that right? No. 0.75 and uh, 3 times, oh, it's 2.25. I'm stupid. Okay, so, but it's a, but it's a, a, a negative, right? So there's a negative right there. So I'm going to take that to my E, uh, the, that, that's the power. And so my base is E, so let me hit that. So I get 0 0.1 something really small here. So he's, he's way the heck you know, down here. Oops, that's at four, isn't it? One, two, three, four. So he's way the heck down here. Okay, I can see what he looks like now. So if you, if I, if I'm going to draw this thing, then he looks like this. Okay. Now, but that's not our graph, is it? Okay. Where's our graph? Our graph is actually going to the right two and up one. So I pick this point, right two, one two, up one. There he is. Right one two up uh, one there he is. Uh, right one two up one and then right one two up one. Uh, he's right there. Okay, so that so my real graph is right here. Oops, missed that. Yeah, there he is. And they got that and that and right there. Okay, so you can see that you can see that asymptote right there. See that guy? Then? He didn't he didn't cross it. So there he is. Okay, All right. Real quick, I think that let's see what, what else we have here. I think we'll be done. Yeah. Um, okay. So let's let's see how this is going to pan out. There's a. Um, so if you have, if you have, a continuous compounding. If you put some money in a bank and you have continuous compounding, which you won't, but if you do, uh, you're going to have to use this uh, little formula right here. So, uh, a equals to p e, and then you have r t. Okay. That's your rate. That's your time. That's your continuous compounding. That's your principal. And you, that's the, that's what you're going to get. Okay. So A uh, is the uh, amount, so it's going to be P-E-R-T, P-E-R-T, I'll just call it PERT, right? Where P is the principal, principal, okay, and R is the rate, rate expressed as a decimal, okay, so here we go. So you have A equals to P-E-R-T, and then we have 4,000, so we plug it in, $4,000. Yeah, should have a lot of 4,000s around here. And there's my E, my continuous compounding, uh, at 6%. So it's going to be 0.06, and the time is one year. Okay, times one. All right, so let's just see how much you're going to get. Probably, I don't know, you might, might get a pretty good amount here. After one year, you should have, uh, that's going to be 0 0.06, and that's E. Oh, yeah. And then you got 4,000 times, and oh, not too bad. So after a year, you have uh, 42, 47.3, roughly 5. Okay, that's how much you're going to have in your account. All right, so PERT, continuous compounding. What's the key here? If you see, if you see the words continuous co or compounding continuous or continuous compounding, uh, that's that's your E. Okay, you're not going to you're not going to use this guy here. So um, that would be P1 plus R over N N T. Okay, this is not continuous. <laughs> okay, not continuous. Oops, continuous. Okay, this is continuous, the E. Okay, all right, a couple problems will be done. Um, express this. So let's just simplify this guy here. I know we worked it out on the other page, but let's just simplify it. If it just says simplify, just simplify. 2 squared is 4. That number squared is going to be e to the 6. Okay, there it is. Bingo. Uh, let's graph this guy. Very graphical, but we deal with it. So we have uh, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two. There's no restriction for uh, for x here. 
And uh, plug a zero in here, it goes to one times three is three. And here we have, uh, let me just, I gotta use my calculator here. So I have uh, at one, it's gonna be e to the one, which is that number, and then times three, okay, eight. So it's gonna be 8.1548. Okay, by the way, what's our, what's, what's, where's our, our asymptote here? It's this guy here, isn't he? Right there. All right, and um, at negative one, let's see where this guy's going. At negative one, that would be uh, one negative, and then e, and then three times. So 1.1, 1 1.1 ish, oh, three, six. And then negative two. So I have two negative, hit my E button right there, getting smaller and smaller and smaller, and then three times that is 0.4. Okay, so 0.406. This is graphing. So we have uh, negative one, two, and we're at about 0.4, which is about there. We have uh, negative one, uh, which is at 1.1, 1 .1, uh, about right there, right? And Zero is at three right there, and this guy is he's way the heck out there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, oh, two. Okay, you can see your graph at that point. So he's a, he's growth, isn't he? Why is he growth? Is that guy? Well, he he it's like he's getting less here. But if this was if this was a negative, like a negative x, that'd be a, that'd be a decay. All right, he'd force it to go the other way. He'd go this way, All right? Okay, let's just do this guy here. So we have, ooh, compounded continuously. Continuous compounding. There's right there. That's, it. That's your P-E-R-T. P-E-R-T. Okay, equals to A. And let's see. So A, oh, this time we got 10,000. So, whoop de doo So equals 10,000. Let's see, equals sign. 10,000. Uh, I don't need those, those things here. And so it's going to be E. My rate is 3. Blech. 0 0.03 and the time is 10 years times 10. Okay, that'll push it up to here. So that's going to be 10,000 e to the 0.3. That's not too bad. That's 30%, right? So we have 0.3 and there's my e. And I got 10,000 and then times ooh, 13,000. So after 10 years, yeah, I'll probably find out, try to find some different investments. Uh, eight. Okay, so that's what you got. 0.59 ish. Oh boy. But that's what it is. So watch out for that continuous. That's your e. Okay. That pretty well finishes that part off. Next, we're gonna look at logarithms, and uh, it should go pretty quick. But uh, all right, thanks for stopping by, and we'll see you guys. See you guys later.